No, it's obviously extremely dangerous, but also extremely predictable. I don't think anybody expected anything better from, from Donald Trump. You know, just moving away from Biden, Biden already was starting at an extremely low point in American policy on Palestine and Israel. Watching this mass slaughter of civilians throughout the Gaza Strip unfolding month after month throughout over an entire year, and Biden's answer to it is to simply supply unlimited military funding and diplomatic support. Yet Trump managed to find a way to make it worse, as he has done before, and he's promised to do it again. And here we are with him staffing his entire administration with religious lunatics who are deeply, fundamentally... Leftists, leftists love to hate on Christians. There's such Christian bigotry with the leftists, it's insane. When you criticize Islam, they begin to cry. They cry for the, the leftists cry for the Muslims. But when you, you call literally not even that crazy Christians, they're way less Christians than any of the founding fathers in America, I'll tell you that much. Many of the founding fathers went, came from a seminary school Many of them were devout Christians, like more Christian. The, the, the least Christian founding father is more Christian than any person in government right now. So this concept, religious lunatics, that is anti-Christian bigotry. And what pisses me off, and not because I give a crap, what pisses me off is the hypocrisy. Like imagine somebody saying that about Muslims. They are such pathetic losers. Attached to the idea that Israel should control the entire land from the river to the sea, that Palestinians should not essentially have any rights anywhere and that Israel gets to do whatever it wants with absolutely no limits, it's difficult to take Biden's extreme policy to an even more extreme, in a more extreme direction, but that's precisely where we are with Donald Trump. Joe Walsh, are you concerned about this? I mean, I certainly, if I was a Palestinian right now, my heart would have sunk by some of these appointments and the collective. As it should, as it should, as it should. First of all, what in the world is a Palestinian for real? What is it? Where is it? Uh, influence of these appointments. You're just thinking, well, we're, we're done for. There's no one fighting our corner with America. And Pierce, you, everybody knows how I feel about Trump, and I respectfully disagree with our new guest, because when it comes to Israel, I'm extremely pro-Israel, and I agree with what Donald Trump's doing. American presidents traditionally, Republican and Democrat, have been, when it comes to the Middle East, we've been like a referee in between two warring sides. These are not two equal sides. Israel is a force for good. And the Palestinian people, through their governments, have been trying to exterminate the state of Israel since 1948. So I think it's a good, healthy development that Donald Trump has put together a team that's going to tell the world we're not we're no longer a referee between these two. We're on Israel's side. So Palestinians, the rest of you, you want to acknowledge Israel has a right to exist. You better do it now. Dave Smith, uh, with, with, look, with all this, with all due respect. <laughs> I, I, yeah. like, oh, here we go. What, what do they have to say? They should. What leverage do they have? They don't have a leader. They don't have a defined border. They don't have in, in you know ancestral ties. They should take what's given to them 100%. And that's not extreme. That's just very practical. If I respond? can just come in here, just because, sure, because there's two, I mean, it's just, it's, it's incredible that Joe is wrong basically about both points. First of all, the U.S. has <laughs> never been a fair referee between two equal sides. They have always been just completely committed to the idea that Israel can do they whatever it wants. Fair, Again, more than 50 fair, vetoes. More than 50 read. vetoes. Joe, it's it's been more than 50 vetoes of the UN Security Council to shield any accountability for Israel. Nobody cares about the UN Security Council. I know the, Mus the Muslims that control it think if they grab a hold and create leverage in the UN that people will begin... All they're doing right now is discrediting the UN more and more. The more they favor... Muslims that are crazy, to be honest. I don't want to say the T word because you know how YouTube is, but but nobody's like, yeah, the UN, we respect it. They're so fair. Even people outside of this conflict, they know they're realizing like the UN's a joke. And billions upon billions of dollars in military funding, no matter what Israel does. And the other point is it's correct that we don't have two equal sides. And the difference is Israel is the occupier. It is the most powerful country in the region, armed with nuclear weapons. Occupier, here we go. Marxists actually existing on top of a defenseless people occupying their land illegally. I wish Israel would ban the UN. I hope America defunds the UN. I think they might actually. Killing their land illegally, demolishing their homes, killing and torturing them at will. And that's a dynamic that is utterly insane that you allow a more powerful country to simply stomp on the Palestinian population. So because they're more powerful, they're evil. Typical communist Marxist point, might I add. Deny them all their rights. And absolute opposition to the most basic principles of freedom, democracy, equal rights. Those don't exist. For Muslims don't believe in democracy. For Palestinians. And yet the United States role has always been to essentially provide cover. They had a democracy. They voted in Hamas. For Israel, 
with this nice rhetoric about we're looking for peace and a two-state solution, all that nonsense, and all Trump has done differently is obliterate that pretense and essentially letting American rhetoric live up to its actual policy, which is that Israel gets to obliterate Palestinians with absolutely any opposition. And it's part of Donald Trump's personality that he likes to bully weak people in the same way he goes after undocumented immigrants. It's the same with foreign policy. Anybody who has- It's the same with foreign policy. Okay, bro. No power should watch out for Donald Trump coming for them. And in this case, it's Palestinians who have the least power, who have absolutely no rights. And we are witnessing the full weight of religious fanaticism combining with US military power right now to allow Israel to obliterate- Muslims should never criticize any other religion about religious fanaticism. You don't, if you would identify as a Palestinian, you have no moral right to discuss f religious fanaticism. You are defending a Islamic colonizing entity, Palestine, Islamic Jihad, Fatah, um, you know, all of these are Islamic supremacist ideologies. So, the fact that you have Christians and Jews coming together and say, hey, maybe we shouldn't give Muslims that don't actually want peace, whatever they want, you start to cry about it. This makes me feel like we got the right people in office. This is great. People like him are crying. Great. I love it. Great Palestinians. And it's going to be a real question of what happens next. Dave Smith, the, the appointments so far that Trump's put forward, uh, Mike Huckabee, uh, who's an unapologetic Zionist, he said, appointed Israel ambassador from America, uh, Elise Stefanik. Uh, she's an and by the way, I know a lot of people, they don't live, you know, a lot of people that follow me, they, you guys don't live in America. I'm letting you know, the majority of Americans feel like the administration is run out. Majority of Americans are Zionists, they're evangelical Christian, Protestant, whatever you want to call them, they're Catholic, or they're just culturally Christian. They support Israel. So this concept that like these people in Congress, the literally middle America everyday type of people, literally a dude that wrote Hillbilly Elegy, uh, and a, a guy that was the governor of Arkansas, which is like literally the heart of America, you know, all of these other guys that are like, you know, ex-military, literally the foundation of America are their ideas of Zionism, Christianity is like extreme, just shows you how out of touch they are with America. This is America. Americans, majority of them, they support Israel. They're not crazy. They, they don't fall into the Marxist leftist hype. And they showed out to vote and they said their piece. They don't want any of the woke Marxist communist garbage that he's spewing. From the top UN job, she's described herself as a pro-Israeli zealot or being described as a pro-Israeli zealot. Marco Rubio, your friend, the warmongering neocon, as some people see him, is Secretary of State, staunch supporter of Israel. And all this comes at a time when a report on Thursday by the Human Rights Watch says Israel's committed war crimes and crimes against humanity by deliberately causing the mass displacement of Palestinians in Gaza. 1.9 million people, 90% of the entire population of Gaza, have fled their homes in the past year. 79% of the territory is under Israeli-issued evacuation orders, according to the UN. And that, the Human Rights Watch says, is a war crime. That systematic displacement of people is a war crime. And How do you know it's systematic? How do you know that it was... What does that even mean, systematic? Like they they started the war? No. Okay, so how can it be systematic? They didn't start the war. If you start a war, you can't be a victim. If they're pushing you back, then you lose that land. They get to decide what they do with it. That's every war across history. You start a war, you lose it, you give up your land. That's how it works. It's not super complicated. Others go further and say, this is the very form of genocide they were talking about. What do, what do you make of all this? Well, I mean, it's, you know, as I said on the show before, it's it's a tragedy and it's, it's the worst thing in the world that's happening over there right now. And just, I mean, just the sheer number of children who are, are dying in all of this. And, and you know, by the way, I just, I'm sorry, Omar's right about everything he said. And I just should point out to, just a correction to Joe because he got the propaganda point a little bit wrong, just so you know. I could take over arguing the Zionist propaganda because I know it quite well. But um, so, no, you can't say the Palestinians haven't accepted Israel's right to exist, that, that you have to move the goalposts. I think that that's a stupid point also, though. Well, they have to accept Israel's right to exist. Who cares if they accept Israel's right to exist? Screw them. If they don't want peace, then it's okay. Then that's perfect. It gives us a transparent view of what they think. They don't want peace. So we should stop forcing them so then other people, external factors, can justify them having their own homeland, which they don't deserve because they don't actually have a nation, ethnic group, and historical ties to the land. So... This is another, this is the issue. He gives very granola perspectives of the pro-Israel side, like the guy on the left. I, I, I just, 
you get trapped in these situations because it's stupid. Well, they need to accept Israel's right to exist. Okay, what if they do? Now you're going to give them a land? That, that'd be stupid now and say they because all of them have accepted israel's right to exist under 67 borders including hamas um but yeah you want to go back in history they, you see they want to go back in history now because they they realize they're screwed they got greedy they, they want to go back oh yeah no no we want to go back we want to go back to these borders it's like whoa 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 i thought the, i thought that was apartheid i thought all of israel was a colonizer he just said he agreed with the previous guy israel's an occupying force israel colonized that area so why would you want to live with an occupier? It, it can't, it's got to be one or the other. It can't be both. But no, it's not, they have to accept them as a Jewish state now. That's the new talking point. But look, I mean, look, Pierce, here's the deal, right? And I think that you've, I've seen you host a lot of debates on this, and I kind of have a sense of where you are, uh, um, kind of, I think, moderate on this topic, and you see some of the points on both sides being made. Yeah. The, take Mike Huckabee, for example, and by the way, you didn't mention Hegseth, but he's guilty of the same thing too. The religious fanaticism, the way they speak about this conflict, the religious fanaticism being a christian is being a fanatic now isn't that crazy but being a muslim that says some crazy stuff in mosques is okay because they're muslim if anyone in a first world civilized society spoke about any other policy this way I, we would all write what do secular what do secularists like this guy know about civilization decency morality again i, I don't want to reference it again the the french revolution was disgusting I mean, what what secular utopias you see out there that end up not bloody? Let's just look at the 20th century. Fully be appalled. I mean, Huckabee, and I understand it's not the most consequential position, but the fact that the symbol of making this guy the ambassador, that he says, essentially, there's no such thing as a Palestinian. There's no such thing as a settlement. Okay, name name a Palestinian leader. Name, name a Palestinian president, emperor, uh, prince, king, anything. Can you? You, you can't. Yasser Arafat, the Egyptian born in Cairo. And there's no such thing as an occupation because God gave all this land to Israel. And so these people there just have no rights. And that's that. Now, if anybody, anybody in a sane, civilized world. Uh, kind of like how the Muslims say, drive them out from where they drove you out. Kind of like how they wage jihad in the name of their religion. Kind of like how they scream Allah Akbar when they're butchering people in the kibbutzes. Is that is that. They can bring in their religion, but other people can't. It's kind of stupid. You got to remove any sort of... All the countries around Israel are religious. They're Muslim. Spoke this way about any group of people. We would immediately recognize you as a dangerous loon who should be nowhere near power. We simply do not make political calculations. Maybe you, in your goofy world, is this way. In any other area of life. I mean, there's a, even the pro-life movement has to make an actual argument over why abortion is murder or why abortion is wrong. They there is no argument. It's a moral issue. You either think that life is valuable at x amount of months or you don't there's no scientific argument so this is another stupid issue that he's trying to say oh even uh you know the pro-life crazy crazy christians they have to make a logical scientific argument not really it's still morality it's still moral you have to decide whether it's moral to kill a baby at x amount of months that's it you don't just get to say god says so it's in my holy book and so um well, we can say whatever we want because it's a free country. You can bring in whatever arguments you want to an argument. But that's not really the reason why this is a just war and why Israel deserves that land. It's because they fought for it and the Muslims lost. You snooze, you lose. You can't cry victim once you start a war and then lose. That's it. There's no religion that needs to be brought into it. So look, uh, to, to Omar's point, I mean, the Donald Trump, wherever his rhetoric is, typically just carries out the same foreign policy as the American establishment. Israel really is the unique difference where he he's shown in, in his first term that he's actually willing to go further. And I am very concerned over the signal, like what Benjamin Netanyahu. Let's get the West Bank, Trump. Come on. Let's get that West Bank, baby. Gaza. Y'all can have Gaza. West Bank, that'd be tough. That would be tough. Who is going to take this signal to mean? And I would not, I hope I'm wrong, but I would not be uh, surprised if Benjamin Netanyahu goes for some major es escalation, um, officially annexing the West Bank or something like that. I mean, it's not as well, if that, it hasn't already that been point, annexed. He knows, he knows, he knows, he knows, he knows. I mean, I'll right. come to Joe on that. But, you know, you see Smodrich, who's the... I didn't even think about that, but that'd be cool. I mean, the issue would be, how would you govern it? 
would you incorporate it into Israel proper? You know, what would that do to the census? What would that do to the society? Would you actually let free flowing travel between the two territories? Because there's a border now. I mean, it's very complicated. I don't even necessarily think it's a good idea generally, but I also don't think it's a bad direction to go down considering, you know, it's Israel and the Muslims colonized it, but people don't want to study history. Far-right finance minister saying on Monday he hoped Israel would extend sovereignty into the occupied West Bank in 2025 and would push the government to engage the incoming Trump administration to gain Washington's support. I mean, I think what's been going on with the expansion, aggressive expansion of settlements during the last year, I think that has been... I love when people talk about the settlements. I don't even... Bro, I, how... These people that have never been to this area, how do you, how do you feel like you have a grasp of the settlements? I don't even think I have a grasp of, of the settlements. I don't understand. The way they divided the West Bank was just, it was so dumb. So, man, I know that there's people trying to establish themselves, settle in the West Bank. But, dude, do I know what's going on there regularly? Do I understand what the ins and outs are in the West Bank, Judea and Samaria? I'm not going to pretend like I do. 